What's up guys, it's uh, Tom from Talking Fitness. I hope you're all well and staying safe. If you're like me, you'll be really aware that there seems to have been a lot of things going on in the CrossFit community, specifically around CrossFit HQ. Um, things seem to be changing every day, every week, and so what I wanted to try and do was give you a potential one-stop shop of everything you need to know at a high level about the things that have gone on within CrossFit in the last few weeks. A little bit of background, but I'm going to try and keep it concise and give you everything you need to know in less than five minutes. So here we go. CrossFit is a privately owned company, and whilst the training methodology at its core is free to use, to adopt the CrossFit brand and name requires an affiliation fee. Since the first box opened in 2001, over 15,000 affiliates have opened in 158 countries around the world. CrossFit Inc. was, until recently, wholly owned by Greg Glassman, who was also the CEO. The CrossFit affiliate model was very hands-off, which whilst enabling boxes to be autonomous in defining their own values, it did create frustration due to the apparent autocratic nature of CrossFit HQ and a perceived lack of communication and significant changes happening almost overnight. For example, in 2018, Glassman shifted CrossFit's focus away from the elite level CrossFit games and more towards addressing CrossFit for longevity and health. The games format was also turned on its head, with the loss of regionals, the introduction of sanctionals, and the direct invite to the games via the CrossFit Open for both the top 20 athletes and all national champions from any country with a registered affiliate, creating a completely different competitive field. Coupled with the mass firings of the CrossFit HQ media team in 2018, the 2019 season was somewhat foggy to say the least. Fast forward to spring 2020, in the midst of a global pandemic, with many boxes around the world closed, the murder of George Floyd prompted protests across the world supporting Black Lives Matter. CrossFit HQ remained silent, whilst many were looking to brands and individuals alike to show solidarity with the cause. From the void came an insensitive tweet from Greg Glassman, coupled with the release of an email exchange with an affiliate owner that was less than professional to say the least. Many sponsors, athletes and affiliates had had enough. Sponsorships were pulled, partnerships were frozen, athletes vowed not to compete under the banner of CrossFit, and over 2,500 affiliates stated their intentions to disaffiliate, with some adding the caveat unless significant change happened at CrossFit HQ. Glassman retired from his position as CEO and Dave Castro, Games Director, stepped in while simultaneously ex-CrossFit HQ employee released a podcast claiming much broader issues with the culture at HQ. Whilst Castro sought to douse the flames in his new role as CEO, there was continued call for Glassman to relinquish all involvement and sell CrossFit. There was no doubt that CrossFit as a brand was crumbling community that had always felt whole was divided and the vacuum was creating a power grab for new ventures to meet the need of the broader community. Then, less than a month after the surge in condemnation for Glassman and CrossFit HQ, it was announced that 10-year affiliate owner Eric Rosa was the new owner and CEO of CrossFit. With a very successful background in tech startups, Eric clearly brings extensive business acumen with an apparent passion for delivering value to the CrossFit stakeholders, read athletes, affiliates, and the community at large. There are no plans to change the existing affiliate model. However, internal review is on the cards for CrossFit HQ, and a new chapter and a welcome change for many is coming soon, I'm sure.